I have one short lad here. Recently, I've been messing around with the handheld G Generation games. By which I mean Gather Beat 1 and 2, Advance, DS, Cross Drive, and the subject of this video, Monowai Gundams. Here's the thing though, these don't happen to be in English. At the same time, I've got good news for you. The menus and the UI on each and every one of these are incredibly similar to one another. Just look at the setup screens of Gather Beats, Advance, and Monowai Gundam side by side. Even Cross Drive has a similar one. Same goes for the pause menu and the command list. What this means is that once you figure this one out, the rest shouldn't be as hard. Before we start, there's one thing I should clarify in regards to this bunch of games, since it comes up when I mention certain gameplay elements. Long story short, these have a slightly different capture system, it lets you stack up to three normal sized units on one another, the grid is a bit wonky, and the characters have ID commands, which bear a slight degree of similarity to the ability system in Overworld, Genesis and Cross Race. Well, with all that said, let's begin. This one's pretty straightforward. Going from the top, it's New Game, Continue and Option, written in Katakana. The third one will change once you beat the game kinda like G-Generation Advance. Now, if you have cleared the intro mission already, this is what you will see once you open the game. This is your operation room. You have it in most G-Generation games, and when it comes to this one, it pretty much follows a 3-4 tab formula that G-Generation Advance and Gator Beat games have. The top one, called Operation, or Saksen in Japanese, is where you get to your mission briefing, the designated grinding stage, and whatever the current story stage is. Right below that is Hensei, or Organization. This is where you can access the shop, allowing you to purchase mobile suits and parts, as well as sell off the stuff you own. If your unit dies in the mission, this is where you can buy it back, just like in G-Generation Advance. Next to that, you can view the list of pilots, mobile suits and parts. You can also assign pilots to mobile suits there, in sort of the same way as you can do in the pilot tab of Gator Beat 2. This button lets you assign a mobile suit to a pilot, and the other one on the right unassigns it. The third option in the Organization tab is your usual Formation tab. The best point of comparison for this one would be the Formation tab of G-Generation Portable. I made a section for it, so here you go. Just like in the two Gator Beat games on the Wonder Swan, one has to first assign a pilot and a unit before adding the DO into the formation. Similarly to how you do it in G-Generation Portable. Though in this case you go about doing it in the Pilots tab. Unlike in Gator Beat, Monowai Gundam streamlines this by putting the pilot list into the main list view, Pilots. From there, it's straightforward. Pick a pilot, select a machine for them, then go to the Formation tab, select a mobile suit slot to fill in, and you can form your squads there. By the way, you can also do so in a similar way one does in G-Generation Advance, i.e. from the Formation screen, which is neat. This button lets you move a unit, this one lets you assign a unit slash pilot to a slot, or replace it with another one, this one removes the unit from a formation, and this one lets you transform a unit. As stated, the way you assign a pilot to a mobile suit in the G-Generation Advanced method here is that you select the option to fill in the slot, and instead of selecting the option on the right in the submenu, you select the left one and you can pretty much set units from there. Now for the third tab, titled MS Kaihatsu, or MS Development, also sporting three main sections. The one all the way to the left is a development plan section. It lets you view the main list of units you can get by the upgrades, or at least the ones you've discovered thus far. The same list sorted by the mobile suits required for the upgrade, and the list sorted by the part used in the upgrades. Speaking of those, the next section is used exactly for just that. I'm certain you've gotten sick and tired of me saying this, but this one's also in line with the general GBA slash DS slash Wonders 1 G generation formula. Anyways. The section in question is called Modifications, which is a pretty apt name. It gives you two options, Modify, which is the one that lets you turn Gilgoogs into Gilgoog Marines, and Enhance, which lets you spend the game's money on upgrading the unit. Some mobile suits like the Gym Custom get additional stuff like weapons and ammunition via these enhancements. But let's get back to the Modify section. Unlike the conventional G-Gen entries like Spirits, Genesis World and so on, you don't level up the mobile suits themselves, you modify them by giving them parts. Simply just select an available mobile suit in the list, and then pick a part you want to add onto it. It's as simple as that. At this point, you might be wondering whether this upgrade process is reversible. The answer is fortunately yes, and this is what the third option in the development menu asks for, 
turning an upgrade unit back to its upgrade list counterpart alongside the upgrade part you used for it. Let me put it into layman's terms, alright? Let's say you capture an enemy gym custom. This unit can be disassembled into a gym command and custom parts, which in turn can be broken down into another stack of custom parts and a standard GM. There you go. Two stack of custom parts and a GM. You can sell whatever you don't need and keep whatever comes in handy. Of course, that leaves the fourth and final tab, which is called System. You can save the game, you can load the game, and you can also view the unit gallery. That's right, it even lets you sort units, characters, and ships by alphabet and series. Not to mention, it can be accessed anytime. Well, not so subtle jabs at G-Generation Advance aside, let's get a move on. Just like in the usual G-Generation entries, you're given a list of actions you can do with units and ships. So, let's cover those. Don't worry, I won't take my time. Both ships and units can do these things. Move, fight, bombard, activate an ID command, capture and finalize the unit's turn. Ships also let you deploy units, obviously, though unlike the conventional G-Generation entries, you can make stacks of free units that are not listed as L-sized. Now, when you are using a stack of units, your move option gets a sub-menu allowing you to choose whether you move a full stack, or just a specific unit or units. You can also get another option that allows you to alter the formation within a stack. Should you choose to attack, you'll be prompted to choose which foe or stack of foes on the adjacent tiles you wish to target. After selecting one, pick your weapon or one of the options to evade or defend, after which the attack animation plays out. If you are being attacked, the UI layout follows a simple formula of counterattack, evade and defend which you should be used to when it comes to G-Generation titles. To cover bombardment, you select it, you pick a weapon to bombard with, mind you some weapons can both attack and bombard, and then pick a target. You can, in fact, commit friendly fire, so keep that in mind if you want to go ham with certain bombardment attacks. Now, there's a bit of a gimmick to this. A target of a bombardment attack can either stay in place to try and take the hit, things like ships only get this choice, or they can disperse. If you want to disassemble an enemy stack, this is the way to go, since they will mostly scatter. However, some bombardment attacks have high enough of a hit rate to connect before an enemy dodges, and you can absolutely restrict enemies evasion routes and force them to just eat that attack. ID commands mostly operate like pilot abilities in cross race. Each character has a set amount of points to spend on these commands, which will buff them and sometimes also their allies. Now, that only leaves capturing which works in an interesting way. Unlike titles such as G-Generation F or Genesis, you don't capture enemies by killing enemy ships and the head honcho units from the bonus enemy group and then grab the ones that surrender. Instead, what you do is that you beat the living daylights out of the enemy you wish to capture. Don't kill it though. What you do then is that you make sure there's at least three of your units next to it, at which point you get the option to capture it. The lower the HP of the enemy is, the more likely it is to get captured by the capture command. Should a capture attempt fail, the enemy will attack the capturing unit and you'll have to try again with another one or wait for the next turn. This leaves the two context dependent options which are transform, that's for transforming units, and yes you can switch them both before and after moving them, and you can also do so while they're in a ship. The other one is a talk option. This one lets you talk to allies and sometimes even your enemies which then triggers various dialogues and events. If you want to know more about this mechanic, try to find a walkthrough guide and consult that one. The third and final menu is the one that pops up once you press the stop button. The options in the menu going from the top are View Minimap. That one lets you look up the amount of units and ships on the map too, by the way. Save, Load and Turn. View your units, which pulls up a full list of them, stats and all, and the last option there opens up a settings tab that lets you skip the bell dialogues and bell animations, but that's pretty much it. Mind you, almost the entirety of this menu translation was done mostly based on my previous experiences with uh, the G-Generation franchise, trial and error, some fiddling with Google Translate, and my knowledge of the Japanese language, which, let's face it, tends to be a bit like cluster at times, so any and all errors present are entirely my responsibility. 
This menu guide will suffice for figuring out what each piece of the menu does, but probably won't be a substitute for a proper translation. As far as guides and walkthroughs on the game go, GameFAQs and similar sites are pretty much your best bet for this one. At the very least, this menu guide will hopefully aid people with getting into Monoai Gundams and its peers, enjoying units like the Gromlin, the Cisco Day, Jim Juggler and others. I'll see you on the next one. Feel free to like, comment and subscribe. And this is Shirtlaid, signing out.